I'd like to talk a little bit more about fractions. We talked about fractions and we said, oh, fractions, if you have a fraction, you just basically took some object and we took it and we divided it into parts. So for example, we can divide this into uh, three equal parts and then we're considering, so three, three goes in the denominator and let's just consider, you know, two of those three. So this is called a fraction and it represents two-thirds of something. And something, you know, it could be something real like a pizza or an apple, uh, but it also could be a number. And you're going to see this later that the reason the fractions are so useful is that we can take fractions of numbers. But for now, just know that this is a way to represent taking a fraction of something. Now, what I wanted to show to you is, is that there's things about fractions that that uh, make them even more powerful. So we showed how to add numbers, how to add fractions, right? If the denominator is the same, I can take two thirds plus one third. And if I add those together, I get two plus one is three over three, three thirds. So that's like taking and adding this third. Okay. Well, what I want to show you is that if, for example, I have this, which is one, two, three, three parts out of four, and I add to it two parts out of four, I get 3 plus 2 is 5 over 4. And you think, well, how do you do that? You only have 4. Well, what this means is it means you have to have another object. And now, adding in this 2, I add in this one and that one. So when I talk about fractions, if the numerator on the top is larger than the denominator, I'm actually having to talk about more than one object. But I can still take these objects, divide them into an even number of parts, and then add them together. So addition works like that. Let's talk about subtraction. So let's say <clears throat> I have an object, which I tried very hard to divide evenly into six parts. And let's say that I have uh, four, six, one, two, three, four. Now let's say I want to take away from four sixths minus two sixths. Well, four minus two is equal to two sixths. So what I've done really is I've taken and I've erased. I'm gonna have a dirty finger after this. I have erased those. And I have two sixths. So we can take and perform subtraction that way. So subtraction and addition of fractions is a lot like addition and subtraction of integers. Now, Fractions are not integers. Fractions are called rational numbers, and that's another type of number. I told you there's more than one type. Yeah, there's lots of types of numbers, and rational numbers are this, this object 
is called a rational number because I can uh, represent it as something over something. And that's what we call a rational number. So I said it's a lot like uh, integers. Well, I want to show you something else, and I can't even draw a picture for this. At least I'm not going to draw a picture for it. I want to show you that I can take, you know, 2 over 3 plus 1 over 3 is equal to 3 over 3, right? Just basic math. I can take 2 over 3, and I can say minus 1 over 3, and that's 2 minus 1 is 1 over 3. Again, we're just adding and subtracting. What if I took 2 over 3 minus 3 over 3? Well, 2 is smaller than 3. So what do we do? Well, I showed you in counting integers and subtracting integers, we have negative numbers. We can have negative rational numbers as well. So here, I had 2 over 3 minus 3 over 3. 2 is smaller than 3. We can't do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to transform this by saying 3 over 3 minus 2 over 3 is equal to negative. So 3 minus 2 is 1 over 3. So negative 1 over 3, or negative 1 third. So just the way integers had uh, just the way integers had negative numbers, we have negative numbers for rational numbers as well. And it's hard to draw. You can't draw a pizza and draw negative pizza. But you can abstract the concepts and think abstractly and recognize that, well, if we know that in integers go from 0, 1, 2, 3 to positive infinity, that fractions do the same. And integers go from 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 to, to negative infinity. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 to negative infinity. Well, fractions can also be, you know, negative one-third, negative two-thirds, negative three-thirds, negative four-thirds, negative five-thirds, and that goes out to infinity as well. So, these rational numbers can behave just like integers. Let's try another one. Let's say you have uh, two over four, two-fourths, minus... 3 over 4. Well, okay. 2's smaller than 3, so we're going to call this 3 over 4 minus 2 over 4 is equal to negative. 3 minus 2 is 1. So, negative 1 fourth. Let's try something else. Let's say I take negative two-thirds and I add to it five-thirds. Okay, well, negative two plus five. Let's go back and think of the, the, the integers. So with the integers, you know, you've got negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, Three, four, five, six, dot, dot, dot. And if you're at negative two, you can add five. One, two, three, four, five. And that puts you at three. So negative two thirds plus five thirds is going to be equal to three thirds. Because you treat the numerator as though it's just integers, you add them together. Negative 2 plus 5, you can go to your number line and, you know, visualize it, and that will give you your solution. 
So any time that you're thinking about fractions, if the denominator is the same, then all you have to do is go back to your numerator, treat them like integers, and add or subtract them accordingly. So let's, let's try another example. Let's try negative one-fourth minus two-fourths. Well, the denominator is the same, so we know our answer is going to be over four, and we think about our number line, we have uh, minus five, or say negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. So we're starting out at negative one, and we're going to subtract two, one, two, that puts us at negative three. So negative three fourths. So we can work with fractions, and we can work with fractions that are, uh, you know, where the numerator is larger than the denominator, and we can also work with negative fractions. Actually, let's try one more example. Let's try uh, let's try an example of. Uh, Let's try uh, negative eight tenths minus four tenths. Okay, so they're both over ten. Both have ten in the denominator, so our answer is going to be over ten. Negative eight minus four. We'll draw a number line. 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. Big numbers here, right? <laughs> negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, negative 10, negative 11, negative 12, negative 13, negative 14. Okay, so we're at... We're at negative uh, 8, and we subtract 4, so we go back minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. That puts us at negative 12. So our answer is negative 12 tenths, negative 12 over 10. So I showed the example where you had... Uh, three-fourths plus two-fourths, and you wound up with a numerator larger than the denominator, well, we can do the same thing talking about negative uh, fractions or negative rational numbers as well. So the behavior is the same. You just have to pay attention to the fact that you have a numerator and a denominator and keep track of those.